I was pretty hyped for Project Cars 2 and all the positive reviews and articles and videos I've been seeing just made me more excited to play it. So, did Project Cars 2 meet my expectations? Well, let's see. Yo, what's going on people? And today we're going to be taking a look at Project Cars 2, which launched on PS4, Xbox, and PC on the 22nd of September 2017. Now before I get into my review and say what I like and what I don't like about the game, we're going to address the elephant in the room. How does Project Cars 2 handle on a controller? Now like I said in the beginning, I saw all the videos and I was pretty hyped for this because they were all giving positive reviews, but I looked over the one thing that was in front of my face the entire time. They were all playing with steering wheels. I can't afford a steering wheel, so I'm stuck with a controller. So this is pretty much how my experience went. I bought Project Cars the Friday, and I wanted to delete it by Sunday. It was extremely frustrating, that's how bad it was playing, but I give credit where credit is due, so shout out to my friend Aaron for helping me fix the controller problem. Now although there are a ton of settings you can change in the menu, you can change the controller, the sensitivity, the analog dead zone, I did all that. Nothing helped. The cars were spinning out for no reason, I just couldn't understand it. I was driving extremely slow, I got to the point where I would have to go as fast as I possibly can in the straights and take my time in the corners because that's where the problem was, the cars just weren't handling in the corners. But if you want to fix this problem, it's actually pretty simple, just go into the settings, the assist menu and turn all of them off. Yes, turn off all the assists. It may sound weird because in most sims, those are there to help. You know, they're there to help you. Like, I don't have a, um, a steering wheel. I can't count to steer. I can't feel when the steering wheel is pulling one direction. So, traction control and stability, they normally help in other sims, but not this one. They actually make driving worse. So, if you want to make the car handle better, turn off all the assists. That being said, when you do that, you're going to have to tune your car to counteract all the oversteering and the brakes locking up and other stuff like that because you turn off traction control, stability control and ABS. So the car is going to oversteer, the brakes are going to lock up and it's going to spin out pretty easy. So yeah, tune your car to counteract those things because the assists are turned off. But once you get the hang of that, then the game is extremely fun to play. So now let's get into re to the review. I like to start my reviews off positive, so we're going to start with things that I liked about Project Cars 2. So first thing on the list is the amount of content. There is a career mode. There are six different tiers and each with different types of motorsports you can compete in. And you can just come back and complete all of these. There are invitational events. There's goals you can chase after. Um, for your driver profile, there's online, there's time attack, there's community events. There's affinity events where if you drive a certain car for a long time, the manufacturer is going to notice and send you an invitation to represent them in a different race. There is a ton of content here that will keep you busy for a very long time. Second positive here is the amount of things you can change in the settings. Yeah, never thought this would be a pro for a game, but it is. Um, you can really make this game your own. You can even customize how the heads-up display look. This is a first for me. This first time I've ever been able to do this in a game. You can change the speedometer. You can set it to um, show all the information or just keep your HUD minimal. You can move the map because the game default starts in the top right. I hated that. So you can move the map down to the bottom left. You can turn on the split times. You can turn on the um, penalties. You can change where the penalties show up. There's a ton of settings that you can change and really make the game your own. If, if you're tired of always having to drive out the pit yourself, you can set it so the computer automatically drives out for you and hands you the control when you're out of the pit. Not to mention the mapping for the controllers. You can uh, you can set any button and assign it to any action and there are a ton of actions but there are only so many buttons on a control so you can pick and choose which one you want to set for this specific car. There are a ton of settings to play around with, so you can really make the game feel like your own. Next up are the car sounds. The car sounds in this game are fucking amazing. Every car sounds different, every car handles different, but the one thing I like the most is attention to detail. When you turn on the lights inside of the car, you can see even the little um, knobs to unlock the door light up. 
But yeah, my favorite thing would have to be the car sounds, especially when you're changing gears. You can tell the difference between the sequential and the eight shifter just by how fast um, the gears change. Like with the eight shifter, there's like a half second delay between changing gears. Even your driver's feet move like you can see when he takes his foot off the clutch and put it on the brake and when he's pressing in the gas. A lot of other racing games just keep your feet stuck to the pedals, they don't even move and that is it. So there's a lot of attention to, to detail here and I love it. Next up is the variety of cars and tracks. There are over 170 cars in this game and 46 different tracks with different variations. It is really great. Like, I bought this game because I know it had Evo 9 and a McLaren P1 GTR, but there are cars in this game that I never even heard about, and I'm having a blast driving them all. Like, there's a Mustang RTR GT4. I didn't even know that existed until I bought this game. So, so the car list is pretty impressive. Hell, there's even a Ford truck, so you can go drive that around if you want. And what makes it better is you can put any car on any track. It doesn't restrict you to anything. If you want to go try your Formula 1 on the Mercedes ice track, go ahead. You, if you want to do multi-class races, you can also do that. You can put F1s and rallycross cars in the same race. So it, this game gives you a lot of freedom. Next up is the weather in this game. The weather in this game looks pretty damn good. You can set it to foggy, you can make it hazy, you can put a storm. You can even mix up the different weather elements if you want. You want the race to start off dry, then rain, then, I don't know, end in a thunderstorm or foggy and hazy. You can set that up. Um, especially the rain. The rain looks pretty good. It rolls off the car when you're driving and when you're driving behind other people, the water sprays up and you can't really see anything in front of you. It is pretty good, but I'm sorry, but Drive Club still holds number one to me when it comes to weather conditions, but this is pretty close. And lastly is the tuning. What I like about this game is especially the tuning. Um, I play a set of course or two, but in that, the most thing you have to change is the tire pressure, downforce, maybe the towing angle and the camber, but that's about it. Not much else kind of makes a difference, but in this game, Every single thing you change affects how the car handles and what makes it even better is that there's a race engineer so while I'm driving I can tell what the problem is you know the car is over steering too much or it needs more downforce sometimes there's those cars I'm driving and I just I don't know what the hell to do to make it drive any better so there's a race engineer you go and you select the problem and it's gonna ask you a series of questions like what's going wrong when you're braking and you can select um, you can't steer while you're braking because the car slides and keeps going straight. You click that and it's going to diagnose the car's problem for you in a sense. And it's going to give you some options. Like it's going to tell you um, reduce the brake power or change the brake bias more towards the rear. So sometimes if you don't know what to do, you can go checking with the race engineer. And that is a really great feature that I haven't seen in any other sim that I've played. So yeah, the tuning in this game is really impressive. And it's extremely satisfying when you're driving a car when you first start out and it is handling terribly and you just go and you tune it and you keep doing laps and you keep fine tuning it until you get the car to handle perfectly and you win a race. It is extremely satisfying. Like I, I can't say I've gotten that feeling from playing a side of course. I, I can't say that but from doing the tuning in this game and you make that car handle like how you want it to is it's a pretty good feeling. But all that glitters is not gold when it comes to Project Cars too. So let's get into some stuff that I just hate about this game. And this is some of the stuff that I haven't seen in any of the reviews I've seen so far. So first of all, the game sticks a lot. It's, it's, it's really frustrating. Like this is fucking unacceptable. How does a game stick in the intro cinematic? Like it's, it's really bad. Majority of my time spent playing this game. I would say a quarter of it is just being stuck in the menus. Everything you do, it sticks. 
especially in the menus if you go into a race it handles fine but as soon as you go back out to the main menu to select a different race or do something else it sticks for like a good minute and a minute and a half it is extremely frustrating i don't know how they let this out in this current condition but no th- that needs to be fixed i don't know if anyone else is having this problem but i'm doing this review on my experience and the game sticks a lot for me and i check and my hard drive is empty so i know it's not that so that's just one of the many problems you'll face if you get this game right now that just prepare to be stuck in the menus next up is the bugs and glitches in this game that needs to be worked on sometimes you select an option in the pit box and it's going to spawn you in a wall or some place that you can't move and you have to quit the race and go back in but the most frustrating thing for me is when you hit restart session and it lines you back up at the beginning of the race and you press r2 to accelerate it starts you off in first gear it doesn't set you back to neutral so many times i restarted a race and it sets me off in first gear and when i go to rev up my engine i roll forward and i get a penalty there was a time i tried to return to the pit box and my car just decides to flip over this is the aston martin um vantage gt4 pretty good looking car except for the back bumper look at this it's like the game was like you know 60 fps and all that fuck that i missed the error when games are 8 bit so that's what i'm gonna do look at it what is this i didn't pay 60 dollars for this next up is the loading times like i said a quarter of this game is spent being stuck in the menus the other quarter is spent being stuck in loading times especially when you when you want to tune your car in the set of course if you want to tune your car you go to the pit you change what you want to do and you just drive out you come back in you can change it and then when you find a setup that works, you just hit one final save and assign it to a slot. Not in Project Cars. If you just if you even want to change the tires, you have to go in, wait for the game to load, load up that setup, change the tires, and then you have to save it, assign it to a slot. Every single time you want to change something on the car, be prepared to wait, load up, and then save it. Why can't I just change what I want back home until I find something that works and then hit one final save? It's very frustrating, but the loading times in this game are ridiculous. Next up is the penalties. I, the penalties in this game, I, I just, I don't understand. So, in most in most games, there are two penalties. One for cutting the corners too early, and another one for if you hit people and that's contact, you might get a slowdown penalty. But there are penalties in this game, I just, I don't understand the meaning. It's like, I'm driving normal, what did I do? And then you just see this tiny gray notification that's up there for a few seconds. So if you're really focusing on this race, you're not even going to see that. But there's a notification that pops up in the bottom right, above the speedometer that says race control. Again, I don't know what I do to trigger this penalty, because I'm just driving straight, didn't hit anyone, didn't cut. But I just get race control, return to this position in 5 seconds. I'm in ninth place. How do you want me to return to position 14 in 5 seconds? Do you want me to fucking teleport? I can't do that. And there are a host of other penalties. You know what I would like? Maybe in this game if they could do like, um, I don't know, a glossary for penalties. Like just click this button and it's going to carry into the list of penalties that are in the game. And explanations for what you did to trigger this penalty so you would know not to repeat that offense. That's what I would like to see. That would be a good feature, I think. So there, there's a, a suggestion for the features in the game. And the last thing is that you can't change your car if you start a race series because you're like you're assigned to this team, you sign a contract. So if you pick a car you don't like how it handles, you pretty much have to suffer throughout the rest of that season till it's done, and then you can start over and pick a different car. But I don't know if it's because you sign a contract that you can't quit or whatever, but it's pretty annoying. So even if there was a feature, you could just you know quit this series and void the contract or you know just something just just let me change the car because i don't like how this one's handled but yeah that has been my review for project cars 2 i have a real love hate relationship with this game like i like to play it but it needs some work in certain areas like the sticking and the bugs etc so if you just get some patches it would be a really great game so final thoughts should you get project cars 2 yes is it worth the 60 dollars yes but I can't recommend you to buy this game right now. Um, I play on the PS4 version. I don't know if it sticks on PC or Xbox, but this is the version I play on. So the game is worth it. It's worth the sixty dollars. It has a ton of content to keep you entertained, but I can't recommend it right now. So maybe wait till a few patches drop that solve some of these issues, and then you can pick it up. 
But yeah, that's been it for this video. If you found this helpful, you can leave a like and subscribe for more reviews and product cards to gameplay. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.